My great pleasure to welcome everyone present here to the guest lecture on the topic Recent Advances in Pain Management by Dr. Mukhya Joshitra. Our Department of Anesthesiology would like to extend a special welcome to our guest of honor today, Dr. Mukhya Joshitra, who will be speaking later today afternoon. Our RT welcome to you, sir. I request Dr. Mohan Joshi sir and Dr. Kumar sir to be featured in the night. If the seed is planted, it will grow and become a flower. Likewise, if knowledge is shared, it becomes another. Today we have gathered here to be awarded with our esteemed guest knowledge. Symbolizing that, I request uh, Dr. Kati Vijay Kati sir to give to our guest speaker today with a flower pot as a fair token of love. Dr. Kumbli to give the floor to our chairperson of the lecture today, Dr. Vijay Kumar sir. These beautiful powers remind us the glory and creativity of God and all what he has done for us. Music is sacred, divine, and God loving thing. It lifts our heart towards him. I invite Dr. Sanjana, Postgraduate of the Department of Anesthesiology, to start the auspicious afternoon with an emotional song. Uh, one from Sin, uh, Madhava. So, I'm going to take a look at that. 
Thank you, Sandana. May I call upon Dr. Santosh Alaman, sir, to introduce, introduce our guest speaker for the day. Uh, very good afternoon, Paul. On behalf of the Department of Anesthesiology, the uh, Patel Medical College, and the BLE Dean to the University, I welcome you all to the today's guest lecture on recent trends in pain management. We have with us an eminent speaker of national review, uh, Dr. Morita Joshi, sir, who has kindly accepted our uh, invitation to speak on this topic. Now I take this opportunity and I really feel privileged to introduce our guest speaker, Dr. Muridhar Joshi sir, to the audience. Sir is the director of Joshi's Pain Management Center and Community Pain Management Center, Hyderabad. He is considered as one of the pioneers practicing pain management uh, in the Asia. Sir is graduated from uh, Government Medical College, Bellary and completed post-graduation in anesthesiology from PGI Chandigarh. Sir went on to finish the DLB in anesthesiology. Uh, he started working on pain management discipline during his stay at PGI Chandigarh. Sir has various publications in national and international journals and contributed chapters in medical and scientific publications. Sir is the first person in India to have authored a textbook of pain management and he, as of today, he has authored uh, total six books in his contribution. Uh, sir is also responsible for starting first pain management fellowship in India and first online pain training program and first Android application in the world of international pain management. In view of his contribution to the academic and scientific knowledge propagation, he has been awarded ISA award for the academic excellence for the year 2010 by IS. Sir has served as uh, Executive Council Member, Indian Society of Study of Pain and Honorary Secretary, ISSP, Andhra Pradesh Chapter. Currently, Sir is Member of Member Editorial Board, Indian Journal of Pain, Member Editorial Board, Indian Journal of Anesthesia and Treasurer, IS. And one more important thing about Sir is, he is the one of the founder member of Traveling Pain School a nationwide education, advocacy, and research initiative on effective and multidisciplinary pain management. Sir, we welcome you. I would, I would welcome Dr. Vijay Kumar, sir, to say a few words. I will share the session. Okay. I will share the session. Good afternoon, everybody. It gives us the great pleasure to be a chairperson of this today's uh, upcoming topic: the recent trends in pain management by the, the pioneer in pain management, Dr. Mulida Joshi. So already, Dr. Santosh Alarman has given the detailed the biotech of this sir, and the sir is uh, a good academician and clinician and. Uh, and he trained in so many residents and fellowships. He, fellowships, he, fellowships, he runs the fellowship in Hyderabad. Uh, uh, now I request Dr. Mulita sir to continue with the topic the recent trends in pain management. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, the University for 
congratulating you for this speaker for today's program. My special thanks to Girish Kulali and Pratish uh, Kumar sir. Because I'm not supposed to be here, I came for a different reason. My daughter got admission to undergraduate here. So we can call him a backshed speaker. So please mm -hmm. accept my apologies if we need a little short term here. Well, as uh, Play much actually the guiding from PJ Chandigarh about the damage to Delhi. And we used to visit the central institute and all. We used to always see people from different walks of life, different part of the country and all, different languages, different food culture, various habits and all. And similar kind of atmosphere I'm seeing it over here. So no wonder it's one of the premier institutes. I think it's 15th one in the ranking to NAS campus. S campus, I think all of you are lucky to have such a beautiful campus. That's all I can say. Great, great campus. It's more like a only driving class So that's what government should take it. Thank you, all the departments, faculty, and the surgical colleagues of the great and also strict team also. But many other people are there. Thank you so much. Well, I would like to before I start sharing my thoughts about the topic, just I want to say a little bit about because I am from Karnataka. So I hail from a full background. I'm very able to write this letter, but I'm going to keep it. I shouldn't cut a video to the standards. We have one hour reading about the history of Bijapur. Only two, three lines. I think many of you are from different books, different states, but certain words which we read with the school days, I think this is the college Punjab of Karnataka. You will correct me, right? Punjab of Karnataka. Why it was both to Bijapur? And the second point, why I still remember about this. Very beautiful work because especially that time the starvation was big problem at that time. Zoni better than a one year left Zoda. I think one of the senior college of police, Zoni is a reverse, I don't know where exactly in which part of Bijapur it goes. If the river goes that particular area, they will have plenty of food in Bijapur. Otherwise, this will be dropped. And the last but not the least thing, why Gold Gumba is built in Bijapur? Anybody knows? Because the lighter system is still not built in. This is more than this job better. Bijapur, I have to go to the Bijapur Park. We have put the one side of the other, the other side of the other. So, if that was a thought and background, I found that is that speaks volumes about the education status at that time. The education status at that time, one side of the other, because so much of backwardness in education, and it was a drought area, let me put it. It was a drought area, food was not available. Many of the roads, probably if you're driving from like Gulbarga to Bijapur, you see, they look like more famine roads. Because those, that was the time when they, if you don't really work this summer, how to survive? Government can't give the money to you. So they used to make you construct a big road. That's how the Grand Trunk One Road, like in that time they made that uh, NH1. Shesha Suri at that time. It's only because he, he did not want to give free food grains or free money to people. You work, I'll give. So they, they never equipped that kind of big national highway at that time. They had only elephants. There's no trucks. But still, NH1, if you just look at it, it's like that. So this looks like a more famine road. So what if this is the history of Bijapur, from there, that particular point of time, now what you're seeing now is, is total revolution. So thanks to all the forefathers of Bijapur district in Northern Karnataka, what are you about? <laughs> <laughs> no, we have gone through all this, we see this one and all, of course. What you're seeing is about plush greenery and water and all those things and uh, 24 percent parts of land all it's, it, it's uh, it's it's the it, it's quite looking great for you. But for us, what we have seen those days, we look at it in different angles. So from that day to this day, phenomenal. Sir, I think hats off to all the uh, leaders, in Northern Karnataka, especially from uh, the Bijapur leaders. Special thanks to BLD once again, and thank you once again for inviting for lectures uh, over to scientific program today. Well, I work at Hyderabad. This is the place where I work. It's called Virinchi Hospital. It's a three-bed -three hospital. I bring greetings from the. Our department, we are about 50 members. So we have the DNB program, fellowship program. We get both national and international students for the fellowship program. Well, I happened to work at Girish uh, in 2011 for a short period, about a year or so. He, was, he spent time with us. And Vijay Kumar Sahar has been our great friend and also made him. And uh, Talikote, sir, we have been meeting regular different conferences, but occasion. So that's my team over there at uh, Hyderabad. And the most important thing, why are we talking about this one? This, this particular topic we have to understand. So the topic is recent trends on the payment, payment management. Take the time. So it basically, Greek goddess uh, is called as pain and on, on her name, it actually goes. It's different as an unpleasant sensory. Of course, this definitely everybody must be familiar. 
unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential damage or discovered in terms of such damage. That's the definition given by IASP in 1974. In simple words, patient says it hurts. Right? But why are we discussing this topic? It's very important. We could have spoken something or something else, but why about pain? And what is the relevance to today's session? We just look at the, the prevalence of chronic pain global level because you have to understand like these days we call it a global citizen. So the way you like national institution, you have the global citizen. This is the prevalence of uh, different various conditions in the world. We just look at it. It is for any department as such. The cancer prevalence is say about world over is about 0.4 percent. Coronary heart disease six percent. Diabetes about seven percent. Pain 26 percent. Fine, but what is that? Now you just talk of cancer. We're just discussing about that and probably be a little baby for having some oncology unit or something like that, maybe the mid planning. You just look at advanced in oncology. If you talk of surgery, you talk of robotic surgery, advances, right? And if you talk of well, chemotherapy, they have the mechanism like you got now nanoparticles where you can just load the drug, they have liver tumor, just inject and it won't kill the liver tumor, whatever is there, you don't have to operate. And you talk of radiation, you talk of LINAC and all those things, gamma knife, everything. They know coronary heart disease, you got the polystenting, the drug eluting stenting. And different kind of surgeries, and they've got so many, like you know, beating heart surgery, non-beating heart surgery. There are so many variations. We talk about diabetes, we talk about mechanical pancreas, or pancreatic transplantation, so much advances. Come to pain. See what is the end result of cancer? Many people, the fear is painful death, not death. Death, nobody is scared in cancer. It's painful death which they are scared. Talk of coronary heart disease, they may end with peripheral vascular disease, gangrene, again, same problem, pain. Diabetes. Talk of neuropathy, nephropathy, right? Retinopathy, angiopathy, lakshmipathy, umapathy, sabapathy, all pathies will be there. And having said all these things, talk of pain. Which is the last molecule you are aware? Can anybody elaborate what pain medications do you use? Proteolin clinical work. I'll start with one, paracetamol, easiest thing. Second, anybody can add? NSAIDs, two. Then? Opiates, three. Then? Think about everything else apart from this. Okay, neuropathic pain, okay, anti convulsants. Then, okay, let's calculate count this one. Past summer has been the eight year drug. Opiates, you know, morphine and the derivatives, pencil and those. Uh, that NSAIDs and all the, which is the last NSAID you used, newest, uh, latest one. Cox to inhibit escape, there's a cardiovascular complication. Many of them, but we don't have one or two molecules just surrounding with hedge. Sorry? I the old one, our generation, not your generation was acyclophenic, it's again a cousin, it happens to cousin of diclofenac, because acyclophenic, acyclophenic has to get converted to diclofenac to act it. So your last molecule, effectively good one was diclofenac. That came back in 1990. 2000 over, 2010 over, 2020 over, COVID, no new analgesic has come. How much, like in advance, have the other three have made and where is pain? Right? You got a point, what advances, so no new molecule has come. That means how can you, if, if it was, what is the implication of this one? I'll tell you a simple example. I was just talking to Dr. Santosh in the homeless surgeries, you do party, you're saying so many, so many emergencies, so many electives and all those things. I mean, the best of the best centers in the world, 60 to 70 percent, in the world I'm talking about India, 60 to 70 percent of people still have moderate to severe pain in the post period. Right? This an example, classical example. Ingwell hernia, Subarcanoid block, same surgeon, operates on the same side. You give diclofenac to one patient, he has good relief. Next patient, same surgeon, same side hernia. You give diclofenac post op analgesic, he is not happy. Yes or no? Why does this happen? Right? It's interesting. You must be seeing it, probably, especially surgical colleagues also must be looking at it. Finally, what we tell the patient might be functional or psychological. But we don't admit of 1990, we don't have a new molecule with us. Right? You talk of surgery, you talk of like sutures are not good, they are the staples. That's right, So many things, I'm just, I'm not saying anything about it. Just look at where we are. Hell, you see, at the end of the you talk of the Bijapur, I talk of Bagalpur, I talk of uh, Birmingham, I talk of Trolley, New York, the two things the patient wants to know. How many stitches? Whether it will be pain free. What you did in the inside of the nobody knows. Right? Basically, pain in the post operative period, and how many stitches will be there? Does the people go for laparoscopy because it's considered a stitchless surgery? They put what they put in the morbidity, they don't want to hear. They just want to hear no stitches. Right? So, such a basic of pain, 
we are not able to make any progress. So what is the reason for that one? Right? We'll talk about it. As the discussion goes, it will be interesting. If anybody has any doubt, you can always, you can always stop me, then not a problem. Say, I told you, world over 22 to 26% patients are in chronic pain, right? Economically, economic impact unimaginable. India, when we got independence, the population was about 35 crores something. It, is, uh, it was around 117 crores in 2010. Now it's around maybe around 135 crores, I think, probably. 135 crores as of uh, 2020. And how many people we lost during COVID, I really don't know about that one. The survival rate uh, in 1947 is 30 to 35 years. People were dying because of uh, starvation, starvation and other things like the malnutrition. And 47 years by 1990, people still dying with tuberculosis, malaria, paralysis, all those things we conquered. Now the average lifespan is about 70 years for women and 16 years for men. Don't ask me why they go an extra year for women. You know why? It's because of the hardship we ought to suffer in the men folk hand. God has been extra one year to stay back in our earth before you come upstairs. Right? So question lifespan is increasing, but lifespan cannot increase on this earth without paying tax to the Almighty. Right? You have to pay tax. That tax you collect in the form pay. So what we have, like India, the, you know, the sweetest, care, sweetest country in the world, the 25% of the population are diabetic. So 2020, already 2022. So basically, age related changes are going to come, most important, because especially now, we never have, say, for example, uh, I'll give one more example, other way around coming. Uh, you talk of 1970s, probably, sir, other things, we, we, know, we used to read at that time uh, advertisements like, Ham do, hamare do. Family planning. This population was control big thing. Hamdo Hamara do. After that, maybe around five, six years down there it came. Pehla bacha bhi nahi, dusra bacha baad mein. Now we are able to follow what I'm trying to say. Look at the ad, which is to say. Then came the life insurance. The people started living for longer time. Now the life insurance policy, you know, jivan ke saath bhi, jivan ke baad bhi. Why does this, this change? It's only as for demography. As the epidemiology changes, the demography, you have to change the time. We used to have a phone which is linked to the particular device. And you are having a phone which is cardless. So things are changing. So if you just look at it, the age rate disease is uh, disease disorder going to like arthritis. We never did talk about joint replacements 30 years back. We're doing it with joint replacements. We never talked about that. Because you leave for longer term, we never talked about spine fixation those days. Laminectomy was the highest surgery, that was the end of it. So now you talk of fixation, implants, and all those things. So things. And last but not least, emptiness syndrome. So if you look, look, go back to the definition of pain as such, mm -hmm. unpleasant sensory and emotional experience, associated with actual or potential. Emptiness syndrome is probably, of course, Vijayapur may not be an exception, but if you go to my special capital cities, one son in Australia, one daughter in America, parents stay on the 35th floor in Hyderabad, one of the high tech city area. And there's nobody to take them to a doctor. Both the children, they talk from US and Australia. Nobody to accompany them to the, the nearby doctor. And we don't have a very good old age health, old age healthcare system. We don't have. So a lot of these things are there which are going to create complications complication coming days. And if you just look at the, where is the solution for all these things? You don't have medicines. People are living for longer time. And where is the end to this one? What are the new molecules? What we could have got and all those things? Nothing of that sort. 30 years, no new molecules. So how, how do we go about it? And in fact, the first pain physician in the world happens to be Mr. Adam. It's because he was the first man who was hunting on this earth. He got injured and probably somewhere. I think most of you must have been in childhood time. But like in the view, probably you were not so naughty compared to us and all. Like you keep your finger right like behind the window or the door and somebody closes the door. And you get that pain. And first reflex is, right? Who taught you by keeping this finger in the mouth, pain will go? That's important reflex. It's only because it happened for so many years. So many of these things, protection like are you placed like this? It gives you immediate relief. There's no nothing it don't it gives relief. But how did they have this reflex? Who told you? So these are things which are going to that means time immemorial from that time, early man to this date, till the work is on, it's not completed. And this is one of the most important picture and why I explain very why exactly why we are not able to find new analytics. This is one of the reasons you should be able to understand. So there's something called as a, a surgical incision, or if you call it trauma, it could be shaving cut also. It could be. 
basically incision. Make, if you just look at a primary activation over there, what you see, you can have point and effects there. Point and effects. So if you just look at primary activation at that time, for example, some incision has been given. If you just look at because incision, the stimulus starts, especially if you remember the Robbins pathology, what we used to read, maybe you read a different book at this stage. And the potassium ions get released, the prostaglandins, hydrogen ions, the bradycanin. If you look at the stimulus free narrow endings, okay, the impulse gets propagated. Secondary activation, if you remember the rubber tumor dollar, the triad. Remember that one pathology? Forgot it totally. Okay, if you just look at it, you can see swelling over there, secondary propagation, it goes to other free and narrow endings, substance P gets released, precious platelets, spice T gets released, precious mast cell, hydrogen gets released, impulse gets propagated, substance P stimulates blood vessel, again the body can get released. So basically, it's called as inflammatory soup. Inflammatory soup. And they have isolated not less than 23 to 25 inflammatory mediators. 23 to 25 inflammatory mediators in that area. And how many analyses did we really count? We counted paracetamol, right? And prostaglandin gets, prostaglandin gets released, and prostaglandin inhibitor, right? So they, of course, that's also. And then hydrogen ions, fine, no, radicin, fine. Paracetamol we have, prostaglandin we have, maybe opiates, receptors there, fine, good. Then you talk of, after these three, maybe you can talk of steroids also. Maybe you can talk of uh, steroids. Steroids. Steroids are going to consider, like, I'm just doing it. And then maybe you want to click, you know, there are 20 something, you said, fair enough, anti -convulsive. So I said 25, you could only count up to five. Rest 20 are leukotrins, complement, interleukins, and so on. If you just look at it, our example, what I think about the ideal hernia patient, the person, person, first person was probably prostaglandin secretor. And you gave diclofenac to prostaglandin inhibitor, right? And it worked. And he got good pain relief. The second patient was probably interleukin secretor. And you did not be anti-interleukin, which is not there at all. So even if you give, if you do serum estimation, diclofenac level will be same. This person has good relief, this person did not. So in 2004, they published a study from the US, one of the universities. And they, like, you know, they bifurcated humans into different alleles, basically, different kind of personal. So basically, for example, if I had to come from uh, hostel to here, I need a, a maybe a transporter, if somebody accompanied me, or maybe I come in vehicle. So here, diclofenac to reach this receptor, you need a transporter. Some of us lack the transporter. So even the blood levels are same. One patient gets good relief, one patient doesn't get good relief. So that's how humans are dealing with like different alleles. So that is one of the reasons why we are getting. But person is having said that this is what it is, and then 20 are missing. That means where is the research should be at this thing? To develop anti interleukins. We talk about newer all six at the end of the book. That's an exam question. I'll be talking about that one. Newer all six. Again, this is a physiology. We don't get bored why exactly. And it's very important for you to understand. You had any question by phantom, phantom pain exam? This is an exam, exam for the phantom pain person. Many of you might have heard about this particular thing. I don't know, especially my surgical surgical colleagues. This is the ortho people handling more phantom pain compared to this. Basically, if you just some people come back quickly for thing, sir, when uh, after amputation, everything is fine. Not everybody develops uh, the phantom limb pain. It's uh, phantom limb sensation is different. That limb is there and all. If you just go back to telescoping and all those things, many of those things, pain is different. Some person will come and say, like, whenever I'm having my foot, the pain increases. If you don't have food, I don't have any problem. But if you have food, my pain increases. You start thinking maybe psychologically it's gone because limb is gone and all. It's not like, if you just look at this, this is sensing homunculus. You just look, it will go back to physiology. If you just look at this particular one, see, look at the way it is represented. This is the way, it, the face is, the cheek, okay? And you can see over the teeth and all, this is a forearm, okay? So the trunk and all those, then lower limb, okay? Now, if you just look at it, if you do forearm amputation, I repeat, if you do forearm amputation, right? This amputation you had to do for some severe trauma or chronic posture, whatever might be the reason. Now, what happens? Brain is a very big real estate agent. It it will not uh, if some part of the part of the body is some part of the body missing, it won't accept. It starts looking for it. Start signal. Start saying signal. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And what happens? Because this is not there, and brain start. What the cheek area starts growing into the forearm brain, forearm region. You can see this area grows. That's where. Whenever he is chewing, the pain increases. And you think that this is hypothetical. No, I'll show you. This is done by one of the Indian neurologists, Ramachandra Guha. 
This is the functional MRI. If you just look at this one, I'll show the picture what exactly was this particular patient. Okay. If you just look at this particular functional MRI and all those things, you just look at all this part. Okay. This was sensing homunculus, right? This is the forearm, amputation done, receiver pain. The cheek area, which was there, started, started growing here. Subsequently, to our nearly one year of exercise and all those things, and rehabilitation, so finally, they could separate the cheek area this side, forearm area that side. You got my point? So, question here is somebody comes and says, when I'm eating, my pain is increasing. No, it may not be, so it must be something else. Or somebody, for example, should, if I go back, if somebody says, if somebody undergoes lower limb amputation, complaints of pain, if I never go to bowel, when my bowel moves, pain increases, means maybe abdomen is growing towards that area. So, never ever think that he's lying. No patient will ever come to hospital to pay charges to you to be to be labeled as a psychological or functional person. Why will he do that one? Right? So this is what I'm trying to understand. When you start understanding physiology and all, you'll be able to explain things much better. So these are some of the principles of pain management, whether it's chronic pain, acute pain, what are name. The simple thing, first thing is to treat underlying pathology. It's simple. If somebody has a fracture causing pain, fix the fracture. Nothing wrong about that. And probably it might take some investigation and it might take a few hours. Maybe till that time, probably you can use some uh, bridging method like, you know, to increase the pain tolerance threshold, you might be pharmacological approach. You might be some analgesics so that he tolerates the pain. Because you have taken for x-ray, some mo moments will be there, he, he might trouble you. So you might be some, maybe diagnostic or water paracetamol or whatever you are using in your institution, you might be giving it. Non-pharmacological approach is more like meditation, hypnosis that we can't use in the hospital setting for acute conditions. Because you ask somebody who comes back to start meditating, he'll go and slap with the other hand. So it doesn't work like that. So, but it's good for the chronic pain, some headache, stress, and all. Meditation, hypnosis, feedback. Nothing wrong about it. Everything has its own place where you want to use. The third principle is pain pathway inhibition modulation. This is one of the increasing endogenous opiates. It's something like that. Uh, like acupuncture is something what is called because moment to test the endorphins and all. But how exactly is acupuncture? Of course, I'm not supposed to speak because it's not our part of stream or something, but still you have to understand something. Best take the forget about uh, acupuncture and all. You, see, you have the national gay sorry, sports day for the college. You have. Say, for example, see somebody who is playing football. You're playing football and all those, you fall and then again you run and all those things. Once you, you, you won the match, you go back to the hostel room and like, you want to say, have a quick shower. You suddenly see your knee is bleeding, which you never realize. Because you start that endorphin when you start running and all those things. See, in the football match, you see somebody falls, some some physio comes, sprays something on the particular area, and again starts running and all those things. But next match, they say, he's out of because he's got injury. But how did you play that match on that day? It's because of endorphins. The surge, which will be there because you're running, and that takes another 20 minutes. Always, the body is full of endorphins. It is there. But that's what acupuncture, they place so like you keep on doing acupuncture and all those things. At the end of six weeks, you almost see, there's some, you know, if you're doing the, like, you know, there's something dissolved oxygen. That was just oxygen you just look at. Beyond the limit, you can't extract oxygen from the plasma. That's what you keep reading, right? So you can't extract. Same thing here, endorphin, beyond you can't do it. So after end of six weeks of well, keeping this sitting center, usually we say, take a break for two weeks and then come back. Because endorphins regenerate. A third, the other one is stimulation of spinal cord gate. I'll be talking about it. It's something like how you can stimulate the, the poly, like, you know, heart blocks, the pacemaker. Right? We have some leads with which you can stimulate the spinal cord. The spinal cord stimulator. Inhibition of descending pathway happens to again acupuncture, high frequency. The last but not least is the interrupting velocity pathway, that is your nerve block. Right? That's fourth in the category, not on the first. Treat the cause, you can use medications to improve the threshold and all with these things, then you can take a nerve block and all. But doesn't have to be the same sequence. Depending on the need, you can always alter like as you But this is how the standard principle as such. And some of the emerging international pain management aspects, if you just look at uh, the whole thing. And uh, before I would like to say the uh, yeah. So non-image, you have the uh, different I'm just I'm going forward. Nothing, nothing. It's fine, actually. I think I have a spread. Then as you talk about nerve blocks as such and all those, we discuss the medications and all. Some of the different medications which are being in pipeline, I would like to say, medication which you can expect in five years is one is called NAV 1.3, NAV 1.6, 1.6 inhibitors. These are the new medication. And then fatty acid uh, 
like hydrogen inhibitors are there then you got a uh, lot of newer things like anti interleukin they are working on they are working on a different thing. not only molecules it's the two things one thing is you can discover new molecule or newer drug delivery systems we talk about both these things what are the recent advances what is happening and what is of clinical relevance to us it doesn't matter something somebody is doing how does it matter for me as is i can't use it in my day to clinical practice so non imaging assisted interventions of course when we were doing it and now also like we doing the, the theater and all like the subarachnoid block when you do it you don't do any imaging and we still do it some people might do it for sake of thesis some call it some scanning and that's a different story and if you just look at the whole thing like in something like this and then like something we do trigger point injections somebody has a scar entrapment and all those you might do it then you talk of uh, a trigger point injections and all for some of the chronic pains and all it's quite quite common especially if somebody comes with uh, myofascial pain we use the trigger point injection which of course i heard that uh, the department is as running already active pain services i think santosh was mentioning very happy about that one like now it's like it's formation years and it just goes about it and earlier we used to do it blindly over here and all now we use that so that you know, for example if you're doing it here if you don't know how much depth somebody's thin somebody's thick and how are you sure that you're not touch the pillow so in the image for example for you and if you have to go from here to probably the gandhi chowk to the other gps earlier what i used to do is i would start the vehicle at auto follow which is the way to gandhi gandhi chowk now what i put a gps but then also i can get trouble like i cross check because it's not a problem my vehicle goes to plants in the middle of the so chorus and then the police starts finding me so but at least a gps if you can navigation for all these things why not use a navigation tool in ultrasound machine if you're lying in the ot in nerve blocks you can use same thing for you at least idea is two things here one is it's a therapeutic on what you're doing trigger point injection you should be sure that you are that you are at the target point and you can enter the target you can see that the pitch you can make good at pitch that is clear that's target point and second thing also it's not create a complication sometimes what happens unknowingly you might go little bit deep you know how deep is somebody's intercostal the blood plain you don't know why do you want to trouble that one? so you can do that particular one so and it learn repeatedly also like i would like to give an example the previous slide of course this is quite quite interesting of how you learn about it. i'll talk about it. this is the uh, uh, epidural over here conventionally we must be doing with uh, to the needle lots of resistance technique or maybe hanging drop something like the difficulty is subarachnoid block it's not not a problem like it's a single sac like esophagus you inject the local anesthetic it goes and touches what are the concerned roots you get for example you want to do the, what are lower limb surgeries you want to try let's take for example uh, bilateral varicose veins you want to do it fine both it block it is surgery fine when epidural see the technique over here what happened is epidural needles came to india before uh, after the catheter came we were first to use epidural needle to needle sometime in 1990s so needle came first the catheter came later so what used to happen like we thought we can use to the needle the way we use the subarachnoid we could do lots of resistance in the local anesthetic right effect used to come and they wanted to operate on the right side the left side is to densely block the right is not total block or may 40% block we didn't know what we need catheter to put the catheter we thought we do single shot epidural we thought we can send it to it like you know, at that time the biggest uh, problem in spinal was postural headaches or uh, postural puncture headache what is but to the needle was there and we couldn't and we used to wonder why exactly it's happening and all and now also if you just like, if you do it uh, like only a stand alone to the needle if you do joint replacement you not you put catheter also you do bilateral t care put a catheter also still you can see one leg is very well blocked other one may not be adequately i'll show you why exactly i'll, I'll show you. i also is to wonder because see, for example if you're doing a <coughs> uh, uh probably joint replacement surgery under you ask for an x ray x ray knee joint and uh, ap lateral something but so because that, that because of degenerative spine the spine can have so much degeneration sorry the knee can have so much degeneration you think spine cannot have degeneration how many times have you asked spine excellent patient might be having degenerative scoliosis you put your needle you'll be hitting the bone you think you are in midline you touching the bone but which part of what will body you touching one way to overcome this if you can have an ultrasound machine you can try it but why i am trying to say think about this one the knee can become valgus varus person walking like this and how about your spine and sometimes you think what are you doing you are hitting the bone and all those and blood type and all those things so think of this one question in is lot of thesis work has been done for so many things but think of the newer things so maybe there is some point there or you might come in conclusion no we need 40 patient this 40 patient that way not much of technical expertise 
Whether getting it going next year is fine, AP, AP, especially AP and lateral, pre-op helps or not. In making it comfortable then. Question here is, again, same on Ropuik and Ropuik, you keep on with thesis, something new you can think about it. I'll show why this is important. Of course, this is the actually, uh, this is SI joint pain, what we're talking uh, quite often, especially we always say, these days, these people are lucky if they have the button, vehicle. So press the button, vehicle start. We used to keep the scooter. At one point, the scooter used to get angry with us. One day, it used to kick us, and that's the end of it. We used to get all the pains over here. At least these people have that quality, that, uh, what do you the buttons? I start to come to something like that. You press the button, the scooter starts. We used to have our own problem. This is post certain neurology about basis. People live for longer time, you know, compromise, they're going to pay it. This is what I'm trying to say is, uh, this is very important. Like, epidural, we do it in a prone position in the chronic pain surgery, but not for the acute pain for the surgical wound. Chronic pain, like back pain and all those. You must be wondering why exactly we have to do epidural in the uh, prone position. Why not in sitting position? Why not in lateral position? It's conventional. Sitting in lateral conventional. Why we do it in the prone position? I'll show the pictures why exactly. We'll come to this one a bit later. Yeah. If you just look at the, uh, this picture, it's actually this is actually the pelvis, this one. This is the needle in the caudal area. Okay. You can see the contrast here. Right? So question here is if you just I told one that I'll be come back to the same thing. The spinal sac is like use of a single tube. If you talk of poly epidural, okay, forget about epidural. If it is still we call it embryology, it's very important. The spine is not formed as a midline block. There is a right component, there's left component. You heard something called spina bifida. Spina bifida is because the midline, the spine, one side did not fuse properly. That means it was coming from two sides. Right? Similarly, you've got not one epidural space, you've got two. You can see here. It's not like single sac. The contrast, you can see the picture, this side, this side. So there is a median septic, which are the columns which are there. So when you put an epidural needle here, put a catheter, it might it will coil somewhere there. Call it meant contact more on right or more on left. And depending on that one, you get one side more, one side less. Nothing wrong with your technique. But if you put an iterathical catheter, you will not tell this they change. It's get this change because of epidural space is not from the one side, it's from the two sides. And you have multiple septic, not only that one, even the stress and all, you play sports, you play volleyball, you say football, or you bend and all those things, you had a fall. It forms every time there's blood in the epidural space, it forms scar. Like how probably when you have the adhesions in the abdomen, every time you go into abdomen, some adhesions, somewhere it forms and all, similarly. And if you just look at, for example, somebody comes with back pain going into right leg, you want to be side specific. Side specific. Right side, you should be very specific. And uh, you see, for example, you put an epidural, the solution goes left side. Patient has paid money to you, and you put the epidural, not that you want it, because you did not target it that way. Now, for example, you know, for, this is the prone position. Because prone, prone position is with a left side, that's right side. I wanted to put in left side epidural only. This is the contrast zone left, right is free. The two he needle, if you just look at the sector and all those things, this is the, what you're seeing, the, the, the translucence here. This translucence is nothing but the, the way, the, the, in the inter, interlinear space. If I want to go to the left side, I'll go here. If I want to right side, I'll go here. That you can be specific in your epidural. If you want to do the chronic pain work, you have, if you do it sitting position, how do you put the X-ray? If it's lateral position, where, how are you going to stand there? If it's prone position, you are comfortable standing, patient is comfortable in front of the CMS room, APV or whatever you want it, and you can easily go and do it. The same loss of resistance technique. So this is one reason why we do all the chronic pain position, we do internal epidural in the prone position. So side specific fine. Sometimes what happens, so for example, this word, if you just look at it, this is only at maybe at this particular level, L45. Right side disc was there, this side disc was there, this side epidural solution went. Sometimes what happens if you just look at it, you have to side specific and side specific also. For example, if you have something here on this particular side, here this is where the root is getting pinched, but this two are free, this is where the root is getting pinched, and you want to go here, you have to be not only side specific, you have to be site specific also. At that particular site you want to go. So that's where this comes, like, you know, it's not only side transfer on the epidural. It's not only site specific on this electrode and also the site specific. That particular route is being pinched. That is you have to see in the MRI and then you have to do that one. So you have to be site specific, site specific. And if you do what is called as a, a caudal, caudal if you do it, for example, you now if you just look at the contrast, 
needle is in almost midline we are injecting the contrast okay one side it is going faster other side is going slower that means the, what is the common sense the fluids takes path of least resistance the path of least in this side you wanted a solution to go to this side but it went this side so that's where the transformal liquid will become much more popular compared to other things and if you go back to not only why we should use imaging yeah this is what i wanted to speak about trident lorefim you must be seeing many of the uh, for example it's an exam question for the trident lorefim you might be getting it under management of which other and there was one not now about uh, three years back when we did that imaging and all those things so we did expertise in imaging and those days these are the common things one was select plus block and another was trident i think made a serious mistake remembering exam questions for us or some discussion apart from that nobody no active pain thing was going on and what were the thing like you know like you no know, you have to do the poly i still remember we had a patient actually in hyderabad first few patients lot patient came and told for the medical colleges uh, they some trigem they wanted to do the trigem neurologist and neurologist they wanted to so what was the thing that like we didn't have to remember neurostimulator and ultrasound also so i mean our not blocks and all we learned it the paresthesia technique the brachial plexus block paresthesia and injection come out and that's how the so the, after that what for trigem also it is with paresthesia put a needle and keep it Then you have to ask, you have to tell the patient before only what he is going to be like shock kind of thing. Then he like in the, for example, you have four pages standing there and somebody is doing paper doing. Then you keep on trying. Then you have to keep on asking the patient. Laga kya? No. Laga? No. Laga? No. Laga kya? Laga kya? Laga kya? Patient also gets tired. Then he realizes this fellow will not leave me if I say laga nahi. Laga hai bolte hai, chhodega hai nahi to. I think that's an ad also. I think no vehicle. The small boy guides that uh, driver. Laga kya? Laga? Abhi nahi. Abhi laga. Ab laga kya? <laughs> So finally, that man, that man, uh, like he said, lag gaya. Lag gaya to he injected seventy uh, percent alcohol, and finally the patient pain did not go, but he did not complain also, because first he started to feel lag gaya, lag gaya. So finally, then then he went home and all the subsequently he came to us and all and then something uh, again pain and all those. Just routine. We had to look at all the other local pathologists like you know, like you know, some dental issues or something. Like that. Just look at uh, North Central. He had a big rent in the soft palate. The needle tip had gone to soft palate. It had created a hole, but he was not bothered. He was already seventy when he was doing his routine work. And I did not tell him. But I'm just saying. I asked him. I did not ask him how it exactly happened. Then I asked. Him, then he told me this, 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 and all. Then I realized and all. Of course, we managed in a different way. But that was because of we did not use the imaging. Right? Now you just look at it. Now for example, imaging like the corporal neural surgery. You want to do say, say, V3 only. You want to do okay? V3 maybe on the left side. See, for this is the foramen oval. Can you see here? Can you see a translucence here? This skull and uh, oblique cube. Can you see translucent? Anybody? Difficult? Yes or no? If you say yes, yes, you are allowed to go there. No, it's it's a fluid surface. This actually this mandible. What is the fluid? Because this view is difficult for you. This is a ramus of mandible. Okay. This is a teeth. Teeth. Okay. This is a teeth. Ramus of mandible. This particular the translucence here. This is a needle. This is a needle. It's towards the lateral part. Okay, if you just look at right angle, it's like this. Here, yeah, after me, I'm going to mandible. You want to go to mandibular division? You can go to mandibular division only. And if you just look at this particular thing, this is a transverse. Go out and affect. It's foramen oval. So you can see the foramen oval. You want to go for after me? You go to medial portion. You want to go for mandibular? You go to uh, lateral portion. If somebody has watched V two V three, you go somewhere here. Two third. And this is what you identify. You put the needle in right angle. And subsequently, if you just watch. It's a needle. Okay, this is a bit. What you see? The lateral view. This is a. Anybody? Cilia tarsica. Bit of diffusion. Right. And this is where we get external admirators. Right. This is the para. This is the paramen oval. This is just by pockets. Exactly by pockets. And you understand the paramen oval is very thick. This is lateral. You have to make it in two two dimensions. You can't make it in only one side. You can't go only like this. No. Make it because you lag it, lag it, lag it. So you have to go this way and this way. And you can do the lesion. You want to only for V2? You can do V3. You can do combination. You can do anything. So what was blind thing we were doing earlier? You know things have changed. The complex rates have come down. Even if you don't reach the target, what will happen? Imagine. Well, I couldn't reach. You won't take somebody's help. You're not any harm to you, right? So this minimizes the complication. And fluoroscopy is available definitely over here. You can also do here. Right, it, it's nothing. Something in a great excel. Nothing special about that. Just getting oriented to this one. So we have finished this particular year.
epidemioscopy. This was an interesting, of course, got stuck at a particular point of view, but a lot of you working. Again, again, I would like to come back to our post question days. The list used to be like this, I still remember during my uh, UG days. DJ Vegatim, DJ Vegatim, DJ Vegatim, DJ Vegatim. Now, what is it? Lab Coli, Lab Coli, Lab Coli, Lab Coli. Now, how far from DJ Vegatim we came to Lab Coli? Where did the DJ What happened to those DJ Vegatim patients? I still want to know. Remember, almost every day, six cases. Those days, uh, Rantidin was not there, Simitidin was Simitidin was available at the Rantidin was there. No PPA inhibitors, none of these things were there. So, almost every hospital we did at least four to five DJ Vegatim. Right? The question here is, JJV got to me, why it became lab quality? No? Subsequently, all the pain of this to JJV got to me thinking that it's because acidity, acidity. Subsequently, probably this was the endoscopy. Then, who said that ulcer? Probably he was uh, diagnosed and all. Who didn't treat, was not treated. Even had to be treated. We had the proton pump inhibitors and of course, rantidine simulation, all those things were there. And all those things uh, went off. Then we got ultrasound. If somebody had gallstones, we could actually diagnose something and all. So, combination of ultrasound, endoscopy, reduce the incidence of JJV got to me. Now, hardly we do, I think if at all we do it only for the Cox phylogenesis, we might do gastric bypass. Right, sir? It's if they're upset, Grishik can correct me if I'm wrong. Is there obstruction, we do bypass from DJV. This is apart from that, almost gone. So, question is, whole, the one generation has <coughs> missed that particular. Same thing, if somebody has back pain, how about putting an endoscope in the back? Maybe you can see something you can treat. Why do you want to operate? So, that's the epidemioscopy came. The difficult problem is okay, epidemioscopy in the best of the best centers takes at least 40 minutes to complete one procedure. And if you just look at this particular thing, you can feed this particular thing. Of course, you can't see much in the epidural space apart from the fat, lymphatic blood vessels. You can't see much. Of course, we do probably these people these days we do what's called the transferomal endoscopy, distractive and all those things. That's a more of an advanced technique. But routine epidemioscopy, apart from breaking adhesions in the polyepidural space, we don't use it routinely. And of course, synthetic chain blocks and all. Again, we used to, if you remember those days, we used to a lot of lumbar symptoms, burgers, disease, and all those things. The dissection is, looks looks nice, but dissection not so easy. Little pattern area. Grish, what do you say? It's not that easy to reach that pattern. And these days, most of these people are on clopidogrel ecosystem, or maybe in pacemakers. And the first thing they said, so don't stop those medications, or so you'll get in, you'll get in heart attack. And if you operate with those things, you'll get heart attack. Who's going to handle in the post of retrovital hematoma and all those things? Sometimes, see, a lot of these things are there, you know, sometimes they say they care and all lot of this. In this condition, for example, if you just look at this one, this is a, like CT guided lumbar synthetic chain. The chain will be somewhere here. You just put the needle on local CT guided, deposit the low neurotic solution, and it's done. Take care basis. Burger, this is where you were doing earlier. You cut open and all the support stitch and all this. Finally, the, finally, the pathology people say it was not a simple chain, it's just a fat strand. Our tissue specimen is not enough. And I guess surgeon has to confess in front of the pain. He can't tell him. And the pain doesn't go. He keeps on coming here and there. Sometimes surgeon takes leave for four or five days. No, no. I'm telling you, see, all of us, I think, I'm, I'm telling you, it's not a case. Something, if I have this final day of postman headache, my headache starts from that point of time. Like, you know, all of us have gone through it. We have our own pain seniors who are sitting here, white here, probably bald here. It's not because of that pain. It's because of these reasons only. If somebody is not bald, that means something wrong with you. Not enough mistakes. Time is still. And this is all the same thing about... Uh, Again, hypergastric plus look, especially if you talk of uh, endometriosis and all those things. You talk of endometriosis. Of course, some people put the color, don't worry, don't get it wrong. Confused the button, they will be behind white hair if you check it. Well, that's fact. Right. And if you just look at this one, like especially hypergastric plus, there, again, one more thing, if you did a lot of pelvic malignancies and uh, quite common uh, pelvic malignancy, what you get was, so you get to either perineal malignancy, pelvic malignancy. Abdominal, you know, celiac plus block, you can do the way you do the, the CT guided uh, lumbar syndrome, celiac plus block can be done. Pelic malignancies, those days we used to inject what is called iterythical phenol, something like that. All. The problem with that one is somebody had ball bladder working well, and you do this one, they might end up with a ball bladder disturbance. So somebody will require lifelong catheterization and all. To overcome that, we do what is called super hypergastric plexus block. At the, uh, at the pelic uh, promontory, we go to the LFI injection, inject the, or put the needle from both sides and CT guided or fluorocytic guided, inject neurotic, it is done. And one of the most important, this is the one, very simple one. You can use it quite uh, regularly. This is the sacral coxial junction, very useful for perineal malignancies, especially prostatic malignancies and vulval malignancies. Patient says, I'm sitting in a mass, I can't sit and eat. I had to lie down this side, that's it, eat. What you can do, root tumor is undesectable. 
you do get see if you are in valley or along with pain you do pilot get you get this thing for what we have to sacrifice you just go there put a needle there get contrast it goes like this that's a, that's the youngest ganglion discovered in the world ganglion of walter it was discovered something 1990 so from plant card so it came so it's very simple to do it and very effective patient gets very good relief because it's all more of because that's found by junction of the lumbar sinus coming from both sides comes in mid sacrum and at the junction of sacral coxal junction you get a particular change so very simple thing what what we are thinking as a major things and all are getting simplified with imaging and many places technology is available and it's very easy to do it complication minimal many of this can be day care i ha- i hardly admit only the trigeminal patient apart from that nothing is trigeminal i only admit only for sick sometimes what happens you say you say what is the neurosphere conflict you think it was a flipping sometimes what happens you heat sink is there the needle is here you are uh, probably generating radio frequency energy it's nothing but heat it goes on the what happens something blood stream which is fluid flowing there that will take away the heat you wanted the nerve to get lesion but the heat takes away that one so next day morning on table pain next time patient pain is still there so you can still go next day you can definitely get it so that's one reason why i keep it otherwise that also is student day care not a problem of course radio frequency generated of course to talk of 1950s and all so many people underwent laminectomy and all and many of them did not have the relief and it was found at that time that many people had the resurgent arthropathy resurgent basically you just look at the spine to be called a triple joint complex triple joint complex nothing but this what is the intervertebral whatever the distal like the interlamellar area one and the facet here and the facet here of course facet and all are not part of the current course teaching for the anesthesia and all the maybe if ortho colleagues are there they know about it and this was the beginning degenerated especially somebody lifting weight or something like you know one fine morning like you know you got post gestation seated the bld the came with the papa and the car and all those things you had heavy suitcase you took pick that took suitcase and dicky tuck tuck pocket there same day come to emergency that's facet joint as the classical especially gas cylinder khatam ho gaya newly married went to the gas station because he wanted to prove his wife that i can get a gas cylinder gas cylinder wala to rakh diya yahan pe giro aage yahan pe बीवी देख रही है इज्जत का बात है किसी को बुला भी नहीं सकते उठा लिया टक टक हट खट पकड़ ले सो दिस वाज फेसेड एंड द मैकेनिज्म विल नॉट नो सी क्वेश्चन हियर इज हाउ साइंस इज डेवलप व्हाट आई एम सेइंग नो मे बी समबडी हैज डिफरेंट एक्सप्लेन बट दिस ऑल थिंग्स हैपेंड एंड एवरी पेन डजंट हैव टू बी डिस्क इन फैक्ट दे डिड एन एमआरआई इन समवेयर 9 इन 2020 2020 2020 पीपल ऑफ 40 पीपल हु हैड बैक पेन और वो लेस देन 40 हु हैड बैक पेन 40 हु डिड नॉट हैव बैक पेन all of them had something rather if they would have back pain would have said because that is only has the back pain so that's the reason radiologist really quite cleverly read my wife a radiologist of course quite clever the right correlate clinically matlab aapka problem aapka hai hamara nahi hai aapne dhang se exam mein nahi kiya to aapka baaja bajega mera nahi bajega so but question here is what do you what else you can do so if you don't examine yeah if you cannot correlate clinically it's very difficult it's again it's again pathology what you can see Uh, this is a joint of course it's very powerful joint doesn't get damaged some people really get come sacral arthritis and all those things very use very good very useful technique and all those things you can see the sa joint you can do fluoroscopy again take it basis sometimes we do what radio frequency lesion this is rf mode something electrocautery only the electrocautery is they don't have control on the temperature so their job is to actually actually hemostasis or maybe what a coagulation they want or cutting whatever but for us what if you use excess energy on the nerve it leads neuropathic pain usually we limit the amount of temperature and also the duration how much you want to that's the reason why we have all these numbers and gadgets of course some of the interdiscal therapies which came and all those things they wanted to the annular plasty annular tear and all those things. we use it to select some patients and all selected patients you get annular tear but not amount to disc prolapse doesn't require surgery some people do epidural if it works fine otherwise what we do is we put a uh, like in this kind of device over the electrode on the distrode and get to the limb spinal cord stimulation i was saying about this one especially especially uh the post laminectomy still a good surgery has been done everything is fine patient complaints of pain you don't know what to do again second surgery is a third surgery is in fact it was dr patwardhan and uh, his team member like the more surgeries you do on the spine the more becomes the complex it's difficult to refractory pain and all those things and it's not that unless they're really indicated many of the other people would not like to go for second surgery on the spine unless there's specific disc and all because it's not it's a thankless job some people some people might disorder and all but we just look at what happened this group of people please they develop a kind of an, what a chronic renal pain syndrome or mechanism we don't know neuropathic pain and all so in this group of people, what we do the way you put a pacemaker we put a, a diagnostic lead inside and then stimulate that one if you on right side you can the right side you can left left you can go and stimulate at a local it was something like a pulse like a mobile device 
put the settings and all. The patient is put in the pocket. In fact, he can get disturbed. He can go home also. And that that replaces the pain sensation with vibration sensation. A fine sensation. And of course, we just adjust the level where it covers the entire pain area. And we will fight to seven days. If it's comfortable, we'll relieve for more than 50 to 60 percent. Then we offer the permanent implantation. Of course, time period is not a new one. It is there from 1960 onwards. The biggest problem is the cost. It almost costs not less than anything between eight, five to eight lakhs in India. It can go up ten lakhs depending center. It costs. But uh, we might say more costly. But if you look of uh, bilateral take, people going for five lakhs, and uh, people if you say about this one, why not people might go for this? We might be talking about like because we have some conservative families. We might say it's expensive, but somebody might be willing to get it done. We still do. We do it in India and all the but select patients. This release the pain, the the generator access signal generator. You implant it. You can switch it off. You can switch it on. That's not a problem. And we're not cutting anything. You don't like it? Just pull out the lead. Then you pull out the pacemaker wire and the job is done. And the intrathecal drug delivery system is one more thing. You can just look at this particular thing. Um, same thing like now. If you give morphine orally, it causes severe constipation for the oncology patient. The survival less uh, rate is more than three months. At least three months, not less than that. What we can we can load this with a pump, morphine or something. We can put a lead or a catheter into the intrathecal space, and it gives a particular rate. Set the rate and all those things. It goes up particular. How infusion pump goes, and it needs to fill. It comes to 25 ml chamber, 40 ml chamber. You might have to fill it maybe once in three months or two months, depending on the usage. It's a solve. So these are some of the things which are probably used. Start a ankle unit maybe. This thing might be useful. So some of the things like water plus and kyphos plus. There's one more thing which is routine thing. Nothing special. But could you call that to me? Like in this little card, item, if I get pain over here, they should do that one for hospital onco patients. Some one of my seniors still does it for the CA lung. In London, he does it for CA lung. This is really not still happy about that one, but nobody is doing. I'm the only person, last person doing it all. They do percutaneous card item with the CT guide and all those things. Specifically, they go on. It's tricky one, but somebody has to do it. Deep brain stimulation is one more thing. Back to Talam. This is one more thing coming is non-invasive brain stimulation. Non-invasive brain stimulation. It's not a lecture. What I'm it's not non-invasive brain stimulation. Or not the Amrita Anjan gender bomb. It's really they put some leads over here and stimulate and all those things. Something people keep 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 trying and all. The advantage of uh, interventional pain management procedure is, especially non-algebraic benefits, the limitation of side effects, improved quality of life, weight gain. Because any you say any sets you say don't use for more than 10 to 14 days, it will cause effect on the kidney or it will cause effect on the maybe GI ulceration and all those things. For 14 days, you want to give opiate? They say don't give opiates. It can cause abuse. They will care. If you don't give opiate, if you don't give NSAID, don't give steroids. Now, what do you want to give? See, if it's your own mother, if I say I am pain specialist, if I go to my my home, my mother says pain, knee knee pain. Am I should not take uh, NSAIDs? Okay, it's not to opiates. So, what do you do? If the big doctor says so, what do I do? So you know, see, you have, just imagine yourself. You know, parent forget about that. So when we were studying, they used to. I still remember our professor used to say when somebody was. Sometimes you know, we are not professors also. They say when somebody is like, he said, "Beta, to bada doctor banne ke jarurat nahi. Itna pan le na ki tumara bhi bache, tumara dost ke paas ilaj ke liye jaane ke liye nahi jaane chahiye. Bas. You don't become a great doctor. Let your wife and children do not go to your friend doctor for treatment." For fever, itna doctor banjo bas kafi hai. That was honest submission exam that kind of student. <laughs> yeah, I want to pass you. Please do something like this. At least I can. You know, say something like you know, it's part of life. Well, uh, but so basically, the limitation of side effects and improved quality of life and weight gain. You know, many of these medications cause weight gain. Like some sodium water pressure is there. You have less side effects. Like if you get a pain, the patient feels. Ab my traffic police or my guard pain me karat me late ha ke uthaye ye uthaye samajh me nahi aara. Accident hota to. Or somebody is a driver. It's difficult actually. And alert and side effect patients. Even alert and side effect patients. Combination medication interventions. It should not be alone. Go for mix one. A meaningful expectation. Meaningful expect. Somebody wants to become all right or not. It's very important. For these days, uh, insurance companies are very smart. I remember about 15 days, 15, 15, 20 years back and all. And person used to get admitted because he does not want to work in the company. He'll get admitted. Doctor, give me. I have got back pain. Give six months leave. Paid leave. Don't think of them. Six months leave. So that is to be now it's like in guidelines we quote a V S K not more than three to four days there is no guideline if I give more than four days I lose my job your job might be that I lose my job so somewhere I'm just giving so an imaging assistance it's very important practice imaging like you might be knowing the skill and all those you know where structure is there such a thing from your own laparoscopic surgeons 
they already did done surgery. They knew where to the where of the abdominal structures. Now, why don't you have to do surgery? Most important that imaging. So we were told like at that time we were doing the for internship. Don't practice keyhole surgery. And uh, Dr. Girish does only keyhole surgeries. But of course, we use panoramic. That's a different surgery. And same thing our orthopedic colleagues also. Think of interlocking. How they have achieved the mastery in the interlocking because they are able to do the, all the screws and all the. So we also have to change with time. We can't be saying that. My grandfather used to do the same way. I want to do the same level. No, it won't work like that. You have to change this thing. Change the order of the day. That's the most important thing. Of course, until patches and all, you know, but uh, this must be using it regularly. Nothing special. I want to uh, uh, store here. One thing is, it should be 30 dollars works and all. Uh, okay, this is one thing I wanted to share with you. Until patches you're using. This is one thing for especially somebody doesn't want to undergo for joint replacement knee. Either he doesn't have money or he's scared of the risk or, or somebody's family had some problem. We don't want to go for surgery, and we actually said you can't use opiates, addiction, and all this. This is a transnational patch. This is supposed to work for six months. It's, a, it's in going through pipeline. Six months. You put a patch, six months it works for especially. I'm talking only chronic spinal pain and osteoarthritis. I'm not talking about anything other things because it's different. The problem here is, is proven is being trials are going on. Severe cancer, non-cancer pain you can use and all. But the only problem here is it's good to use in some countries like temperate countries, like you know. UK, Switzerland, and all, where they don't sweat. You use it in Bijapur. Six days, six hours, you get out of the patient. You got the point, because you start sweating under the patch. So it's difficult in our tropical climate. It's good for the temperate climates. I'm just giving it. It's the clinical trials, after some early after, these are initial findings. How do you look? Then we have to say it's good for temperate climate, but for our, for our countries, it's difficult. Of course, this is one more thing, an exam question for uh, postgraduate students. Needleless PCA or needle free PCA, it can be either of them. Needleless PCA or needle free PCA. Uh, basically, this was almost it was more than a decade back, yeah, 2006. And they tried in UK, like the way you had infusion pump, but you put epidural and all those things or something, you put, put a wire from here, the pump is hanging, then going for the flow, and the patient wants to go to the washroom, the nurse is in the nursing station. You can't call them because they're not calling bell. So, to avoid this particular thing, patient being tied to the pole, they wanted to put something like this on the patient's body. And then you press the button, like how your cramp is remote, it releases the bolus. But lock, lock, like, you can set the lock interval, so about 10 minutes, something like that. You, he can't get. Bolus, to take it, laga de, it work for five days. Unfortunately, what happened, it was doing very well over about, about, uh, about near three, four months and all. And that particular month, some three patients died and who, who had these things. And they put a query on that, and maybe it's not safe for the patient. Three patients died for some other reason, but incidentally, they had uh, these three patches and supposed to take enough. And that's it. Uh, but this is an exam question. Needless free PC, needless PC. Of course, this is not the pulse from uh, Hyderabad, analgesic beats and all. But these are the uh, upcoming, uh, probably, uh, should say the analgesic patches, especially surgical, surgical, surgical team might use it. You close the abdomen, muscle layer is closed. Before you close the abdomen, where is the pain, especially upper abdominal incision, front pain is upper abdomen. What do you do? Are you done an epidural or something like that or something locking infiltration? Is that the image of this particular kind of thing or weird kind of thing? This is coated with local anesthetic, opiate, NSAID, paracetamol. It will get dissolved in 10 days. You put in the one, and pain is here only, not in the shoulder and all. If you take diaclephan and go really, pura body me jata hai. Think locally, act globally. Pain is here, why do you want to do a rest of things and all? So, this is one more thing going on. This might see the light much earlier. It can be bead form, it can be film form. So put it, it gets absorbed there only. And if you want to get risky analysis, you can give orally. But cost will be the same as your uh, uh, seven to 10 days analysis course, what you would have given, it will be the same cost. So that is one thing being uh, worked out. Mixed paper of again, our generation. And uh, I think, I think probably not for the younger generation. That time, if mixed paper of and all those things we used to use. And, uh, so what has happened, the evolution is, now I told I was talking not about new molecules, such issues, so new molecules being worked. I'm talking new drug delivery system, drug delivery system. If you just look at this particular patch, so what happens? Laparotomy done, diclofenac or something, IB to be given, IM to be given, 8th hourly, something like that. You write in post night Night 10 o'clock, the dew is ready, patient is sleeping comfortably. Sister comes, hey, Mama, chuck diclofenac. So rather pain free. Usko mark ke ke usko diclofenac diya. Now, if you imagine if you have patch like this for him, personalized, he'll keep on inhaling. That works for 24 hours. We have 24 hours diclofenac patch, which he can keep on inhaling, personalized for himself. 
No, I'm just giving like a bit of, see, these discoveries come about of our practice only. How did Chetusko were discovered? Somebody wanted to ask, just, you can't touch the women. So it's about a pipe and lock, so now it's just Chetusko. So everything is listed to mother of invention. This is one thing, especially for young mothers. Very exact, like, this is of course for elderly people for vaccination and all. And this was a very interesting one, actually. If you just look at it, especially for the pediatric people, uh, very useful, that's what they're looking at. Simple example, a three-year-old child has cough fever, you go to pediatrician, the pediatrician gives some maybe antibiotics, something, maybe whatever he wants to give, and maybe first two, three days, they don't give, they say don't give antibiotics, he gives one paracetamol, something like that. He gives the after the fourth day, fever did not come, he gives him antibiotic syrup, gave this one, and the okay, child is fine and all those things. With great difficulty, uh, mother, grandmother feeds, the mother is, young mother is watching, grandmother feeds the baby, so last month, the antibiotic they gave us, and paracetamol gave us 5ml or 2.0ml, or taste it, it's a good ultimately. Moment of the child vomits, first child starts crying. Because child is crying, mother will cry. Because mother is crying, mother the mother also will cry, that grandmother will cry. The grandfather doesn't know what to do, he'll go to the balcony. And the father will go for a walk. <laughs> and after half an hour, after cleaning all the mess, again the show starts. It's a hello, grandmother. Now I'm just giving, I think, just imagine, I, I think grandparents, I, am I right, madam? No, it, it just happens, it's not because, see, this is, I think, this is a difficulty what we are facing, the solution for that one. Antibiotic emergence of the first four days, you don't give paracetamol, vomiting is still there. It's very difficult how much paracetamol has been, how much antibiotic is. And somehow the child becomes all right. Now you don't know what worked. And after three months again, he gets fever, same cycle. This so that one, what they've done is, madam, they've coated the paracetamol and sweat cubic Now you don't have to take a paracetamol with water. With flavor or without flavor, what you want to give. And the uh, trial is going on because it should not be a habit forming for the child. Just have a blue sniff card, then like it's not happening like a big word. Like, so not, like I want peppermint paracetamol or orange paracetamol. So it's that one there, we're going to work on that one. They'll coat this with paracetamol, you just put in more, it melts. So there's no cause of water and all those things. Either you can give before meal or after meal. It just melts in the mouth and so probably grandmother and mother will become, become free from these things. Of course, this is some of the sites of fellowship training programs, I think. A lot of time I have taken. Uh, so some of the training programs and all. To conclude, I would like to explain one of the common reasons that people seek medical attention. Needs to manage aggressively and systematically. Acute pain promptly and aggressively to be treated. Synergies, use combination drugs to take multiple points of pain pathway. Multimodal management is the best option rather than going for only one. And of course, this is what we thought of like when they started like this, then being probably the early man and subsequent, of course, mm -hmm. the monkey, then early man, the stone man, iron man, superman. We thought we got somebody else, we got coke man. So best thing is get up and start moving. And thank you once again for listening patiently. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for taking extra time. Sorry, sir. I said 40 minutes. I have one question. Sir, please. What is your experience with alternative medicine? Not pharmaceutical medicine? Sir, actually, honestly, I, I, don't, I have not used. I only think I use the alternative methods of acupuncture I used to use before the government said it's not using it at all. It works like an endorphin kind of thing. Because for subsequently, I was not very keen to use so two things. Acupuncture needle, a patient comes to us and use the same needle. Now, these days of diabetes, mellitus, and all, you keep on probing somebody into cellulitis, I'll be in a problem. That's one thing. And same needle has to be uh, to be used for patient. Or every time you need the new sets and disposable. And it, it was becoming a bit cumbersome. So. And HIV, HIV says we don't know who's positive, who's negative. You put an IL set, put that on. So putting 10, 20 needles, one IV candle itself, we have problem in the OT. Putting 20 needles, so I don't use. But other things, I, because I don't have much experience, I can't really comment about that one. But what about the yoga, meditation? Yoga might be very useful. Sir. Definitely, because what happens, you know, they increase the pain tolerance threshold. Because you do yoga meditation, that what is happening, sir, you keep on spending on the social media and you're not spending time for yourself. And your creativity is going off. So for you do yoga for about 30 minutes, 30, 20, 40 minutes, at least this, you should at least practice 10 minutes of idleness, sir, every day. You don't do anything, just 10 minutes, just sit, sit, just relax. I don't have to think anything at all. Of course, not, we should not do it in the operating room, but definitely in the, at home. But please don't do the 10 minutes, switch on the monitor. So, if you have a poor beard, you may have to say, What is the speaker? I have to say, Please don't do that. What is in the hostel or maybe in the home? So, yoga meditation, I strongly believe so. Yoga meditation, walk, definitely. And, and physiotherapy is one thing, sir. Here, we have. We think that we do surgery and it's not like the physiotherapy is very important, especially major surgeries. 
If the person cannot be mobilized and all, it, it's going to be very Herculean task. And one more thing, neuropathic pain also is very important. So a lot of times you think that you have some pain is because of some surgery, you do it and subsequently think that the neuropathic pain is the main component and only medication should have been tried and I guess you feel the problem. But alternate medicine, I have not used it, so I, it's not fair in my point to express. Audience, any doubts? They, they, they don't know what exactly they heard. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be like more like a stand-up comedy show rather than a lecture. <laughs> no, but most important is that two, three things for especially for you. So only needless question, the newer analytics actually had got this particular one. This, uh, this one slide. It is going to be an exam question for this, especially for anesthesia post student surgeon. Yeah. Meantime, you can just ask any question. Only one slide. There's no doubt. That. Anything else? Uh, any that uh, doubts or anything like that? And nerve blocks are very useful, so especially, I should say, post surgery condition, and especially, I told you, only pain and suture, there. suture part of a laparoscopy, we're able to do it. Pain part, especially nerve blocks, if you ultrasound guide, it, really, it works wonders. Works wonders. The requirement comes down significantly. And sometimes surgical people are very happy because they can do dressing and all this. Because the post up analysis updates. Uh, especially they say they can do the almost uh, plastic surgery, especially they say. After three to four days, patient will not come to much, especially the, uh, I would like to say the skin grafting if they're done, wound dressing. Because the block, especially the diabetic neuropathic patient, every time you can't get them for development to, and every time you want to do the dressing, the de-sloughing will be there. They get to be painful. So these blocks really, they say, it helps them. And for three, four days, they do dressing. And four, fifth day, they come to the theater. Otherwise, you have to go to the floor to give the blocks. And but very, I think, more you can work it that way. It's very useful. Sir, your headache with headache. of course. And we, uh, we use predominantly headache. But again, most important, again, reason also you have to know what the primary type headache is secondary. Primary, again, you have to go to the cluster type and other one, tension type and other one. And uh, if you go for the secondary ones, of course, then it's major is you can have to go. But again, apart from using the conventional medications, nothing special. The headache, this is three volumes are this. If you start reading that, there's a big headache and all. But what, luckily, what I'm in hospital, where I work, we have neurologists and all those things. So we work as a team. We know, he knows what group like can be. Some people come with hospital headache and also sometimes we go for the blocks and all. And you tell, he has missed out some medication. I might add, maybe if I missed out and all. It's a teamwork, it's a teamwork. It, it can't be alone. It's like he, you see, at least 28 specialty people are working on pain sector. 28 specialties work on. I cannot say I am the third. I know from my sphere and this one. But you should take help of other people also. Open it. So, but uh, especially hospital headache and all those things, this uh, especially elderly people, they can, it, it makes wonders. It's quite uh, phenomenal. And trigeminal is one thing. It's an spinoferritin blocks for some of the headaches. Like refractory headaches, and you don't know, and all this diagnostic blocks. Always, if you're not sure, always be diagnostic block. Don't go for the. Uh, they, instead, they started all the laparoscopic diagnostic lab only. Subsequently, they went for the therapeutic one. So, it's somewhere you have to start diagnostic block. If it gives good relief, then you can go about it. Just one slide for this for the FPG exam. Hmm. You can take a picture call if the mobile, I can call that. That would be enough. Excellent. Some changes I had made actually, but uh, this is a load I did not feel like disturbing the. Yeah, this is actually challenges. I was talking about newer medication. What are coming up in the next five years? You can expect apart from diagnosis making. The correct problem is few existing the class of analytics. A lot of adverse, adverse effects are there because uh, okay, exam question. Please take pictures. It will be definitely one of the exam questions. Few existing class of analytics. I told only past all 
opioids and NSAIDs, one or two, but a lot of adverse effects are there. Many failed development programs, and this is the most important, non-clinical models poorly predict clinical success. Like I prepare in my lab, to have, like 10 mice, I give some other new medication, and it is working well, but I bring it to Bailey Hospital, it doesn't work. So non-clinical models are very difficult to predict in the clinical model, and clinical trials are unpredictable. You, you bet first 10 patients will do very well, and you do follow up three months, and four months, suddenly they go to some of the new adverse events, or some heart attack, something like that. So that's one problem. And one more thing, most of the, the last one is very important for us, especially for seniors, is some medication which were working in the RCTs earlier, 10 years back, now you want to use it, suddenly it's not working. So the paper was faulty, design was faulty, or industry manipulated it. So that's one thing, but not for the students. So how do you fix this particular newer drugs for these challenges? Better study designs so that you are sure that you don't get fall because each one molecule to come into the market, it takes at least 15 years. 15 years, one molecule you start discovering today, 15 years to come to the market, billions of dollars goes. Somewhere by 10th year, it, it fails, the whole thing is gone. It's not that easy. And abuse different opiates. Your biggest problem giving opiates is you say it causes abuse, so for example, addiction. So make it that the medication is not getting deep pleasure. Constipation, that part has to be addressed. And approved products should be used, and future product we have to understand. Whatever the detriment is, you should take it on. And we have to enter with new drug classes. Prostral inhibitor, prostral inhibitor, the opiate, what else is? In that context, these are the these are newer medications which are expect next five years. Anti-nerve growth factor antibodies, sodium channel blockers, NA 1.7, 1.8, 1.5, voltage dependent calcitonin blockers, and TRP1 and TRP3 antagonists, NMT antagonists, partial agar. These are the things, classes which are I told you, the sodium diclofen, uh, prostaglin inhibitors, these are the new things which have come. This is the second batch. Fatty acid amide hydrolase inhibitors, nitric oxide synthesis inhibitors, cannabinoids, kappa opioid agonists, central peripheral, delta opioid agonists, and newer targets are being identified with inflammatory cascade, selective reversible inhibitor of microsome prostaglin synthesis inhibitors, and of course, interleukin antagonists. So these are things which are pipeline about at least 10 to 15 drugs. Hopefully, at least in five of them, they come. You can take a picture, I think, probably. Or you can take the copy of the slide. I think that's so these three slides actually I added. Uh, I think if you can take a copy, you can take it from him probably. Uh, thank you, sir. I think that. Sorry for getting this one, but I thought it might be useful for them. Sir, that uh, epidural patch, how much it cost to go to? Ventral patch, sir. Epidural that uh, six months they can keep that. No, sir, it's a uh, trial stage. Trial stage, biggest problem, the what is fear facing is with that one is so because you put the patch, you start sweating underneath the sweat, and the patch becomes loose. And you have to take a shower, and it's it's a different thing altogether. So that is where there's nothing wrong about the medication because they they found the if I bind with this particular whatever the supportive medication that can go six months. The problem is how to put or should you put it underneath the skin? If not as a patch, should you bury it under the skin a small implant like how your uh, chips load that much? So now slight modification is going. So at least the sweat component is taken off. That's one more thing is being worked out, sir. Sir, have you any experience with the restless like sleep? Quite common, madam. Quite common. Two, three things are the one thing when if you have uh, anybody for the matter, unrelated pain in the legs. You had osteoarthritis. The no, unrelated, I uh, have long standing osteoarthritis knee, say for example. Daytime, somehow man has worked in hospital, you went there, and all those. And nighttime you sleep without your knowledge. It starts then. one more the one thing which is found we found very useful is vitamin E made. Vitamin E, 40 milligrams. And second thing is elderly people, especially above 65, 70 years, they're there. They usually uh, tend to lose temperature quite fast in the night. And they she has severe pain. Suddenly they sleep at around 11 o'clock in the night. By 1, 1 30, suddenly they get up because what happens sleep in the night and all those things, the blood everything is like you know, because they don't much stone in the legs, the leg muscle, if they it get pulled there, and suddenly night they move. Suddenly the whole the muscle contracts to pump the blood back into the heart, and muscle goes. Through. And they take a 15-20 minutes. Like if somebody experiences that cramps, it takes about something like this. You just hold like 15-20 minutes. After that, slowly it releases, and you feel better. But you feel some soreness and all those things. These are all uh, quite common complaints and all. So medication. Sometimes we explain why exactly it happened. Once they understand, they feel comfortable. So more than that, there's a fear that something is happening to me. And you want to go to washroom, everybody's sleeping, suddenly you get that particular one, it can be quite uh, troublesome. Sometimes we ought to tell them is either they're not being maybe Bijapur, I don't know how the winter actually I've not seen them. And we ask them to wear uh, warm clothing, some warm poly covers, like in the bed, or uh, 
Sometimes we say you can use a room warmer before you go to bed, <coughs> switch on that one for about one, two hours, room will be warm. That will take you through the whole night. That's one more way of doing it. Especially elderly people, it's quite common. Basically, I'm trying to say is not that every pain requires medication. If you understand the mechanism, then you address the mechanism, many people may not require medication. Some explanation itself, it makes it okay, nothing great, nothing major, nothing major. So that itself. So it's more important. Like, the more you know about basics, the much easier it becomes. You can explain the mechanism, they'll be much more happy about that. Thank you once again, one and all. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Before you could say anything, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Girish Pillard <laughs> for uh, bringing, sir. But for him, this wouldn't have happened. So, my special thanks to Dr. Girish Pillard. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. This is a great informative speech. Normally, we don't like action, but as sir told this is an excellent lecture. And it was the best part of the today. And we were so, it was so informative. And from our heart, the Department of Anesthesiology and the BLT family, we thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. And we hope that we meet again, sir. Now I welcome Dr. Vijay Kumar, sir, to pass a memento and a certificate to sir. Sir, please come on, please. Now I request uh, Dr. Kalikoti sir to present the memento and certificate to our chairperson Vijay Kumar sir. Coming to the end of this wonderful evening, I request Dr. Amsha Ma'am to deliver the honor of thanks. Sir. Actually, it is a Department of Anesthesia, CME. Sir had informed me or he called me. I was very much surprised that why sir is coming to Bijapur. <laughs> then sir called from the office that uh, his daughter is getting admitted in BLD. Then I could not meet for the first time. Then I asked sir, when will be there in the second time? Sir told I'll be there for other three days. Uh, that time you can have some program, something like that. Then I requested, sir easily agreed for this CME. I thank you very much, sir. I still remember the days when I was working in Kaminini. It was my beginning. And mostly that time we were very young to surgery. So, so much comedy mostly sir has done because of our surgeries. And uh, sir was so humble that he used to make sure that all the department make together. And uh, we are so comfortable as a young surgeon. Sir made us so comfortable for the one year that we didn't have any problem for anesthesia side. So thank you very much, sir, for accepting uh, our uh, invitation for lecture. And thank you for all that you have done. For me. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's my privilege to be here to convey the vote of thanks on this gracious occasion. On behalf of the Department of Anesthesiology, Sri BM Patil Medical College, BLD deemed to be university. First and foremost, I would like to thank our guest lecturer, Dr. Muralidhar Joshi, sir, for his short, on short notice, he has accepted our invitation to give a lecture. It was so kind of you, sir. <laughs> Thank you for being for, with us today. Thank you for enlightening us with your vast knowledge. We are grateful for your presence, sir. Thank you. My heartfelt thanks to our chairperson, Dr. Vijay Kumar, sir, and our beloved HOD, Dr. Vijay Ma'am, and our program coordinator, Dr. Santor, for making this event a great success. I extend my profound heartfelt gratitude towards our Honorable VC Sir, Dr. R.S. Mudod Sir for his constant support and encouragement. 
I would also like to thank our principal, Dr. Arvind Patil sir, for being the catalyst that inspired us to do our best and stand as a pillar of power. I thank IT department and medical education department for providing the technical support and arrangements. Finally, I would like to extend my thanks to all our honorable delegates, the various staff from department of OBG, surgery and orthopedics, and our beloved postgraduate students from all the departments for being present here today with us and helping us to make this event a grand success. Once again, thank you all one and all for your cordial cooperation. IT is being arranged. Kindly proceed. Thank you.